Hello everybody, this is Fat Pig, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to auto-process ores with an ME system, an ME controller, you know, basic ME system, and, you know, your SAG mills and your Ender I.O. stuff, so this is basically, you know, how to automatically process all of your ores that come in from maybe your Ender Core or whatever you have in there, so basically I'm going to show you, so basically, Here's a scenario that most of us uh, go through. So basically, you have all of these ores in your ME system. They're not processed, and there's just way too many to process by yourself. You know, process manually. So, what you want to do is you want to have them automatically processed, meaning, so whenever they go into your smeltery, they automatically get thrown into a sag mill, thrown into a, a, an alloy smelter, and then put back into the ME system as ingots. So. Now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to do this. So basically, to have the maximum amount of channels, because each side of an ME controller has eight channels. So basically, if we, if we, for example, we look at the smart cable. Uh, the smart cable has, it says, with the Walia, it tells us that there are zero out of eight channels that is used. Now, if we go here, it tells us one because of the, uh, the ME terminal. So each bus is going to take up a channel so what I recommend is use a dense cable and what that does is it jacks up the amount of channels to 32 channels you can see there it's 0 of 32 channels used so that is what I recommend so basically you want to run a line off like this if you run a smart cable off it'll say 0 out of 8 use so that means every smart cable running off of the dense cable can only use 8 channels but in all you can use 32 channels on the whole cord coming from one side so Basically, what you want to do is, unfortunately, you cannot hook up buses. Oh, I mean, yeah, you cannot properly hook up buses to dense cables just because they're they just they don't fit. So basically, what you have to do is you have to use smart cables. So what I re recommend doing is doing something like this and running them off like this. So you do like maybe let's do eight. So let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now let's run this an extra block over, and just like that. So, now that we have our cables, now you want, what you want to do is, let's just give it a power source. And let's run our sag mills like this. So that's eight sag mills, and then we want to run our alloy smelters like this. So, basically, now what you want to do is you want to hook up the buses. Now, basically, you put the export buses, uh, now this is something that a lot of people get confused, is export buses export from cable, or export from the system, so you're taking out of the system. You're not taking out of the inventory, you're taking out of the system. So that's something to keep in mind when doing this. So, and the import bus is important to wire, so uh, it imports items from your inventory into your, your system. So basically, what you want to do is you want to hook up the export buses to each sag mill like this. So this is going to export all of your ores into the sag mills. So now what you're going to do is you're going to put the import buses along the along the alloy smelter. So now you have your basic you know setup sort of thing. So now what you want to do is you want to make it so that ores get transferred transferred from the sag mills to the alloy smelter. So this also helps with with getting power too. Because fortunately, with Ender I/O, the great feature of Ender I/O, the wires can actually run in the same block, which is one of the biggest features of Ender I/O. It's one of the most useful features. So basically, so let let's run the uh, the cables here, just across like this, like so. And you know you don't have to you know do much. You just got to do this, and then you're gonna hit all. You're gonna make all of these extract without a signal on top of the sag mills. So it will extract all of the ores, the uh, ground up ores into the alloy smelters. So now what you want to do is on top of the alloy smelters, you want to set it to insert. Just like this. Once you set them all to insert, what you what you can do is you can take the conduits and just run them on top just like this. Now you can configure these, reconfigure all of these these pipes to make it look a little prettier, but for now, this is what we got. So, 
It doesn't look too bad, so that's basically how you power and you know transfer all the ores. So now it's base almost we're almost done. So now what you want to do is I'm gonna delete all that because I don't need that anymore. And on <clears throat> now we want to put cards in all of these buses. Now what I recommend is you use you need to have two capacity capacity cards. So let's get some capacity cards. You and two acceleration cards is what I use. If you want, you could use a fuzzy bus if you have more, you know, advanced stuff. But I, yeah, put the the capacity cards in. Now, what the capacity cards do is, as you, this, you, you know, you without the capacity cards, you can only put one item in. So then it will only take one item at a time. But now, if you put the capacity card in, you can transfer transfer multiple items at the same time. So, and the acceleration card, what it does is it transfers items faster. So you don't want to put that in first because before in there. So you just do that for each one of these, like so. And now once you're done with that, you're going to just you know get rid of these. Actually, um, you may want to use the acceleration cards for the import buses, you know, to make it more as efficient as possible. So basically, you just throw this in here, and now you have pretty much everything set up. Now all you need to do is set these the export buses to only extract the ores. So now basically now I'm just gonna grab a stack of each ore that we are going to be processing. So we have you know a bunch of stuff. So now you can just put them into here and it'll select it. It won't take up your item but as you can see the sag mill sag mill here is turned on so let me just put on. I missed one, didn't I? Yeah. So let, let you just do this for each one, and after you do that, it should be processing. Now, after what you want, what you may want to do is leave an extra slot, and what you can do is you can maybe have dart these. You can basically. To make this a little bit more efficient, what you can do is add flint or dark steel balls, but I'm not going to show you how to automate the dark steel balls, so I'm just going to put flint. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to automate, automatically put flint into this slot here. Now what's that going to, what, that, what that's going to do, it's, it's going to increase the main output by 120%, the bonus output by output by 125 percent and the power reduction by 15 percent so that is that's just a little perk that flint has so if you have tons of flint in your ME system this is a good use for it flint here so let's just fill my inventory with flint now once our inventory is full of flint we we'll just drop that in there and you'll see it starts using our flint and you can see the aluminum since I was putting all the aluminum in the code first, the aluminum is getting processed first. So basically what's happening is the, alumina the, the aluminum is getting pulled from the ME system, going into the sag mills, getting pulled out of the sag mills, going into the alloy smelters, and then being extract and then the output is being the ingots are being extracted from the alloy smelters and put back into the system. So Another thing you you're gonna to want to do with these uh, with the alloy smelters is set it to furnace mode only. So if you end up with multiple metals in there, it won't. If you end up with multiple metals that do happen to smelt together, then you know it won't smelt them together basically. And how do I have flint on my? Uh, I don't even know. But that is basically what what you're gonna do now. Say you want to speed up the sag mills or the alloy smelters. So what you want to do is you want to get a, a double layer capacitor or an octatic capacitor. Yeah, so you want to get your octatic capacitors. Now, the octatic, octatic are obviously better, but they are more expensive. They take two double layer capacitors. But if you do have a lot of resources, then the octatic capacitors are a good way to power these things. Or make them faster. Now, what it's going to do is you're going to see this go down, but it's not losing power or taking any power. 
it's just increasing the maximum amount of power. So that means it's the, the percentage that's full is less because it now has more capacity. So now you can see it's obviously going a lot faster. So if you want, you just put one in every single one of these. Now it is a, it is a little bit expensive, but in the long run it is 100% worth it. So, and you can do this with the alloy smelters as well. Speed up that now so you don't you know don't get backed up and you know ores build up in your system because this is good because if if you have a net gain of ores that's not good you need to have you need to keep up with your ores so now if this if you're if you have like seven cores or whatever you people do you crazy people then you may want to make a few of this setup here like two or three of them maybe and what you could do is you can see here 16 of 32. So you can actually do two of these off of one dense cable, which is pretty awesome. So if I wanted to run more uh, cable off of here, you know, do another one over there, you can do that as if you wish. So that is basically how you automate the ores that come into your ME system. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this helped. Subscribe, like, like, and tell me if you guys want to see more of these kinds of videos and it's a gigantic piece of obsidian that is like weird so basically that is pretty much it and so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed and i will see you guys next time this may be series i don't know so peace